It's running. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, I'm David, so this is my official name. <laughs> and uh, I'm here uh, today to talk about some of my uh, recent research about the sharpness of uh, gamma reverse chrome emission spectra. So, um, let's start with the this slide. And uh, this is a gamma reverse. And uh, this is the famous uh, fireball model, which uh, it's just say, say that there, is a, there are many ejectors from the central engine, which is a, a black hole which uh, uh, collects from the massive star or binary merger, it doesn't matter, and it eject, ejectors. And ejectors collide and then emit gamma rays here. So this is so called the probe emission. And when the ejector hit the uh, outer surrounding material, it will eject. Um, it will radiate uh, in many different uh, um, wavelengths. So I'm not talking about this today. I'm just talking about the gamma rays, which is called the chrome emission, and this is called after chrome. And uh, so, in the, so what caused the uh, gamma ray radiation? It, the leading model in the literature for many many years is the synchrotron emission, because there should be. Um, magnetic fields inside the, within this region. So it's, it's, it's very logical to, to think that there will be electrons uh, gyros in the uh, fluidly magnetic field and then radiate to synchrotron emission. And uh, my research, research is basically I take the uh, near 2000 spectra from the official time resolved Fermi gamma reverse catalog sound very official, but this is also it will be also this but by me. <laughs> so I take my whole data and then we do we, we do the analysis again. I but only with those uh, uh, special with a special peak. So I will I will come to this point um, in a, in a few minutes. And I will fit all the spectra using the catalog best fit model, which I will be publishing in a few months. So that um, uh, I will fit the models, but I don't repeat it in the true energy range like I, what I do in the uh, catalog. I, I repeat it in a narrower range, just concentrated on the on the curvature around the peak. So that's that's what my project is. Uh, I want to know the sharpness around the peak, so to compare, so I can compare the sharpness of the peaks of the observed uh, spectra with various physical emission models. So that's the logic of, of, the, uh, of the analysis. And this is one of the um, 1,800 sample spectra from one verse. What's the x-axis? So, um, yeah, so the axes are the normalized, are normalized axes. So they, they are dimensionless, but um, these are normalized from the gamma ray flux space, which is uh, from the newer field. So this, these are originally so it's flux against um, KUV. But, so you can so here the peak is uh, located around here. This is the best peak, and um, the the peak is usually around a few hundred KUV. So you can imagine this is a few hundred or some of three hundred. So this this would be um, 0.1. This would be 30 KUV uh, here. So the whole energy range of uh, Fermi GBM is uh, up from about 10 KUV up to 40 MUV. So this is just a narrow energy domain from the, from the... Uh, yeah. So what have you normalized it to? I normalized, okay, I normalized the flux by the peak flux. So you see this is what? So the peak is also one. Yeah, <coughs> so, and this is also what? The peak position is also what? So I just take everything to a dimensional space, which is a more convenient to compare. So this is a time resolved um, um, spectrum, and uh, these are the actual data points. So you can see from here, around two to three, you start to get all the upper limits here. So which I didn't show here because they are all upper limits. So black line is a model. Yes, the black the black curve is the model, okay. best fit model. In this case, this is a power law and exponential decay. Sometimes you will have the uh, 
have the famous band, band function, which is the join the smoothly join the broken power law. And uh, so let's remove the data points for clarity and then concentrate on this curvature here. So um, this curve is what we call the, the, the prohibition spectrum and uh, we want to know what physical process um, would create this kind of uh, this, this, this kind of shape here. So you can see this is an asymmetric, asymmetric curve with a, with a certain sharpness. Uh, it, it differs from burst to first to burst and from time to time within one burst. So this is only one single time resolved spectrum. So you, you can measure there are many, many different different, different um, sharpness and uh, yeah, different brightness, different intensity. But now I, I want to uh, compute this angle here so that I can I can compare the different um, physical model. For example, the black body. So you have the uh, you have you have a standard black body model uh, time function, and then you can put it in, in also in, inside this uh, normalized space to compare this angle. So um, actually, this is easy, quite sharp if, because this is in log space. If you are talking log inner space, you see this is a very sharp um, peak, and uh, the we consider two very simple physical processes, which is the black body emission and the uh, synchrotron emission from a Maxwellian distributed of uh, electrons. Mm -hmm. So this, this are, so this is the sharpest synchrotron model you can get in a physical case, uh, because you don't have a single electron in reality. You have a, 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 a bunch of electrons emitting, and this we assume all the electrons are at the, the same temperature and radiating at the uh, and we are we are we are directly looking at the same at, at the same direction as the uh, as the as the as the uh, Lorentz boost. So this is the sharpest case we can get for the synchrotron in a physical in a physical um, in reality. So you can actually see that the uh, the so the, the scales are same. Here, so you can directly actually compare immediately <laughs> the mass variant maybe a little bit too for for the uh, for this observed spectrum, while the uh, black body is too narrow. So we just put it together, and you can see the and the, and the fact that if you add up a circle spectrum, you cannot get a narrower spectrum. Right, because you always add, add up, you cannot subtract. So if you add up different different temperature Maxwellian populated um, synchrotron spectrum, you will just get a even wider spectrum here. And the observed spectrum is the black curve, which is already too narrow for this uh, single temperature Maxwellian synchrotron function. So that what it shows here is that we can add up different um, um, temperature black body to create this observed spectrum, but not adding up different temperatures Maxwellian synchrotron to get the observed spectrum. So, what would the temperature? Hmm? What would be the temperature? Well, this is the. It depends on on, on different spectrum. But what is the range? Mm, I don't know, but the the, the peak is around. Uh, 300 keV, what? so 300 keV, okay. the peak, so the temperature is about like 200 yeah. or 100 something. Yeah. So K KT would be like 100 or the order of 100 keV. Just to reproduce the peak. And so this is the uh, actual uh, evolution of spectrum from a single burst. So we evolve from the top left hand corner to the uh, bottom right corner. So the, the green line is also, is, all, is again the uh, Maxwellian. The black line is, the black curve is the uh, best fit model. And these are the data points. The red is just the black body for, uh, for, for comparison. So you can see the black curve 
So because the, 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 the red and the, and the green curve do not evolve, right? Because it's just the same um, prediction from the uh, from the from the from the theory. So you can see the if you look carefully of the black curve and the data points, it evolves. It becomes wider with time, even more with time. But in all these cases, it is inconsistent with a single um, temperature Mastelian single shock. This is very clear from this, uh, this plot. And I did, not, I, did, I did not just do this analysis for one verse, I do it for all the verse in the catalog. Which uh, I do it in the, um, yeah, I do it for all the verse in the catalog, time shock catalog, um, for all the spectrum with, uh, with the peak. Right, because the, <coughs> some spectrum is just a single power law without heat, or some spectrum is just a double power law, broken power law, but it's still rising. Um, so maybe the peak is um, 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 out of the observed of the window. So in those cases, there is no peak compared. So I just drop those. And these are the all the all the spectrum with with the peak. And uh, these are different models. The so is just the power of uh, exponential decay and this is a dimension and spooky broken power are basically the same. They're just shown that uh, spooky shown the broken power but with a little bit different um, um, shape. And this is the overall the black the black histogram the overall. And I place three vertical lines here. The dotted line is the black hole limit. So um, you have to uh, understand that everything to the left is inconsistent with this with the distribution, right? because this is the, the angle, how wide, how sharp is the uh, is the spectrum. Is the spectrum. So, um, um, everything to the left of the vertical lines means that it is it is um, it is uh, it is too 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 broad for the uh, right. Yes, everything to the left is too is too broad for the for the for the observer spectrum. And uh, this is the black hole limit. Of course, this is, this is very narrow. So you, this is, everything is consistent with the black hole. You can only add up to a wider spectrum, right? But um, the Masperian, Masperian single song limit is here for the, uh, uh, in the industrial line. And I see there is uh, over 90% of spectrum, which is too narrow for this limit. So these ninety percent of, of sample sample spectra are all inconsistent with the single Raspberry and single uh, singleton function. And I also place this solid um, line here, which is the single electron singleton limit, which is just uh, if you if you have a bunch of these single electron singleton, then they will add up to the Raspberry singleton if they have the same temperature. Or yeah, they, they, they add up to the bunch of electrons and if they have the same orange spectra. You will, you will see this. <coughs> and in the reality, there would be more, well, more um, there will not be one single temperature in the ejector, right? So in the reality, we would even see the vertical line much more, uh, many more medical vertical lines here for, uh, for just uh, um, different, for more temperature to be added up. So this is, this is, a real physical limit for the single one to be the single, to be the only one, to be the only um, dominant process in the in this case. So I hope I convince you that the mass, uh, the single one function cannot be the only process in play. So maybe maybe there are more, or maybe it's a it's, uh, is a combination of different physical processes. So we don't know, and we, we, we don't want to go too far to, 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 to ask the question of what is the real process in our work. We just want to want to know, okay, if, if Maxwellian synchrotron is not, if a synchrotron is not the dominant process, so how strong can it be? Um, um, how, yeah, yeah. So what is the upper limit? Of a single drop, so we, so I I this is just a very preliminary fit of the data. So just ignore the gray gray curve, 
the black web is again the uh, plastic model, and the red is the black body, green is the metallic, and yellow is the black body plus metallic in this case. So mm, this is a uh, well, you, you cannot say it is a perfect fit, but this is a good fit um, to the data. And in this case, if you look at the peak flux, it is it is like about thirty percent of metallic plus. 70% uh, of black body here. So in this case, if um, we can say we can we can say that within this um, energy range, the uh, Maxwellian synchrotron at most uh, contributes 30% of the uh, energy to the observed spectrum. If there is really, really Maxwellian inside, so um, that's all for my talk. Thank you. I understand that you have some sort of shock process going on there. What, why haven't you tested the branch shot on? Oh, yeah, just wondering yeah. what was like. I mean, you try, I mean, it was very interesting to compare those two, but I was wondering how actually that would branch shot spectrum would look like. It would be also broader than uh, power uh, black body, but I don't know how it would compare to the synchrotron spectrum. Mm. But I mean, it's clearly, I, I don't know exactly how the physics in, in GRB work, but there must be some shocks happening anyway, yes, which thermalize yes. your... Um, the, yes, the theory is there's an internal shock um, within the... Okay, they, they, the theory is you have shocks. You have shocks here, yeah. because when you eject the collide, you have shocks, and the shocks will uh, energize the, the electrons, and then if, they, <coughs> if, if you believe the synchrotron theory, then you will say that there is a big magnetic field here, and the electrons are accelerated, and then they will gyro through the magnetic field and then radiate the energy out. And this is what we observe as the gamma ray. This is the theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, there are many more arguments, mm -hmm. which I am not so clear about. I, I think, sorry, we have yeah. <laughs> it's a better position to these questions. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so, uh, yeah, very interesting. Helps me learn about what I'm looking at a bit more. <laughs> um, maybe, because uh, to start from the beginning, maybe just an extra sentence or so, uh, just on what gamma ray does, like, so what the progenitors might be, or just, just a, a very vague introduction of what we've seen may happen once a day-ish. Uh, yeah, so, just a very basic introduction rather than going straight in there. Here's the Bible model. Yeah, um, okay. But uh, um, then also, uh, yeah, very interesting if you go straight into the peak, uh, but perhaps show the whole thermal spectrum first so we know where this peak is. Because uh, otherwise, because I mean, you've been saying it, you could see that this was sharp if you looked at the whole spectrum. So maybe if we just have one quick slide to see the whole whole thing. Um, 
probably should know that what does time resolve spectrum mean? Okay, yeah. yeah. The, uh, so you, so uh, a gamma ray burst usually consists of many pulses, and in, in one pulse there could be multiple peaks. 